Today we'll be looking at 10 players whose form has been so good this season, they're surely in line for a move in the transfer window. For those of you who play FIFA Foot Manager, I've no doubt you'll have heard of some of these more obscure players. Let's get straight into it though with number 10. First off, and it's Lazio midfielder Sergei Milinkovic-Savic, and if rumours are to be believed, he would have moved like two or three seasons ago. Such has been his form over the past couple of years that the likes of Real Madrid, Manchester United and Juventus have all been linked with a £100 million move for the midfielder. He's established himself as a complete midfielder not too dissimilar to Paul Pogba. He's got all of the attacking movement, the positional sense, and he can definitely find himself with a goal or two. But Having said that, he's also an absolute beast. He's a defensive midfielder when he needs to be, and with parents who both hail from basketball backgrounds, you know he's got the height and the stamina to get up and down the pitch. He's effective in the air, and his late runs are really something to behold when he arrives at the penalty area. Last year, he did say that he was going to stay at Lazio and has got a contract until 2024, but you can't help but think if Lazio aren't really competing towards the top of Serie A or in any European competition, he may be tempted with a move away. Who knows? If Paul Pogba leaves Manchester United, maybe we could see him at Old Trafford in the future. Number nine on the list and signed in the summer of 2019 to Sevilla, Lucas Ocampos is no stranger to a transfer, but seems to have found his feet after winning the Europa League and finishing fourth with the La Liga club. In his debut season with Sevilla, Acampo scored 14 goals as they finished fourth, won the Europa League, like I said, and even scored the winner in the semi-final against Wolves. The Argentinian is quite unusual in the way that he doesn't only have the dribbling, finishing speed and work rate from an attacker, but he's built like a massive centre forward. He's a winger at six foot two, so he's a great target man in the air from set pieces, and it's no wonder that so many clubs have gambled on his potential even when he hasn't been in top form. Since breaking through at River Plate, 10 years ago he's had a permanent move to Monaco, to Marseille and to Sevilla along with low moves to AC Milan and Genoa packed in there as well so it's been quite a busy decade for him although recently Real Madrid have been linked with his services so he may be moving on. Number 8 on the list and it's Vincenzo Grifo the player from Freiburg who has really been pulling up some trees recently. Now in his second spell with the club the attacking midfielder has more than an eye for goal and is actually at the moment of writing his side's top goal scorer in a team which normally comforts in the stability of mid-table. I mean, it's not blatantly obvious that he's worthy of a move to a higher level, but it looks as though he'll have to drag his side single-handedly further up the table if he's to experience the upper echelons of European football. If not, then a move could actually work out. After all, the German-born player clearly has enough talent to have earned four Italian caps by now, where his parents are both from. At 27, he's pretty much going to be heading into his prime rather soon. Although recent spells at Hoffenheim haven't exactly lit up, we could be seeing a new and improved Grifo, and who knows, maybe a big club will be willing to take a chance on him. Moving into number seven, and we've spoken about him recently in our replacements for Virgil van Dijk video, which you can find right here, and it's Southampton's Yannick Vestergaard. The six foot five defender has often been quite a scapegoat for Southampton in the past few years, but form this season has been drastically different. He is an absolute monster in defence but also plays the ball like a prime Van Dijk does as well. He's got the highest number of passes in the Southampton team this season and especially what's impressive is that most of them are long balls as well. During their victory over Sheffield United in December, he was hitting ridiculous diagonal balls, which led to a 3-0 win for his side. Alongside this, he's of course, with his stature, winning a ridiculous amount of aerial duels and is just all round a top, top defender. This is just a small example of Vestergaard's form this season, but the problem is, like we say all the time, when it comes to signing from another Premier League club, they just have so much money that they don't need to accept a small amount of money. Like, realistically, we saw Liverpool pay 75 million for Van Dijk. If any team, Premier League or not, is going to try and sign Vestergaard, given the fact that Southampton are doing quite well, and even if they don't get European football, you're probably looking at at least 40 to 50 million for him. If they don't get European football, it's probably another nail in the coffin, and maybe he will get a transfer. But before we get on to number six, a quick call for you guys to subscribe. We've hit 500k, thank you so much, but now starts the long road to a million, so obviously every single subscription from you guys helps. With that said though, there'll be a lot of people subscribing to sign this next player because his form in the last few seasons has been ridiculous. Mikel Ayatabal from Real Sociedad has definitely been in the sights of Pep Guardiola in the past, and there's no reason why he can't do it at the top, top level. 
In the last two seasons, the Sociedad side has reached the Copa del Rey final, re-entered European competition, and he is such an important figure. In the last three seasons, he's reached double figures for goals, and it looks like he's going to be able to do it again this season, making it four in a row. At just the age 19, he represented Spain for the first time, and really getting into the Spanish squad at such a young age is just another sign of his brilliant ability. So much so, actually, talking of Pep Guardiola, that when they lost Leroy Sané last summer, there was a lot of talk that they'd be able to bring Oyathabal into the Etihad, but they went for Ferran Torres from Valencia, who was actually cheaper. Turns out Ferran Torres is just as good, but that doesn't stop Ayatabal being on the transfer target list of many top European clubs. The winger slash forward is obviously rising with status, as the club are as well, and as long as they continue to challenge the top four and in the cup competitions in Spain, there's no reason why he'd be leaving just yet. But Having said that, a good Euros with Spain could thrust him further into the spotlight. Moving on to number five now, and just another exciting attacking player, this time in the Bundesliga in the form of Leon Bailey. He had a brilliant season a couple of years back and then went a bit quiet, but now with this Kai Havertz-shaped vacant hole in the Leverkusen side, the Jamaican international has really stepped up. His dribbling ability with both feet complement his athletic ability so well that his speed and everything else just makes the perfect storm and a nightmare for any defender. And now he's getting to do it regularly because he's got a prolonged run in the Leverkusen side. As well as Kai Havertz leaving the club, Julian Brandt also left as well to Dortmund and it basically meant that he's got more time to get on the field and do his thing. He recently though has switched to a new agency which is prioritising a move for him to the Premier League. At the moment of writing, he's got nine goals and seven assists in 21 games in all competitions, and at 23 represents so much potential for another team. There have been quite a few Premier League sides interested in his signature, with Tottenham being the latest one linked. In a number four, and it's a left back, turn left winger, turn left midfielder who has forged an extraordinary reputation for scoring goals, partly due to the fact he plays in an incredibly free role on the left hand side of an unbelievably exciting team to watch in Atalanta. Despite making his pro debut in the Netherlands with FC Dordrecht, the German-born international Robin Gersens has thrust himself into the spotlight in Syria and the Champions League as well with Atalanta, alongside others, the likes of Hatibor, Papu Gomez and Josip Ilicic, who will all go down in Atalanta folklore for being part of the side that we've seen rock the Champions League and make it to the quarterfinals last season, as well as progressing to the knockout rounds this time around. His current record for Atalanta at the moment has got 21 goals, 17 assists and 125 games. And it's kind of the fact that he moved to the Netherlands, came through in the Eredivisie that really has kept him aside from the eyes of the Bundesliga, well, at least up until now. There's a reason why he didn't get his first international appearance with Germany until relatively quite late in his career. But now at the moment with how well he's doing and how well his side are doing in the Champions League, there's no wonder there's so many teams interested in buying him. But talking of the Bundesliga, that is where we head for our player at number three this season and a name that's so hard to pronounce, I'm just going to call him Silas. That's because Silas Wamangituka, better known as just Silas, is the Congolese forward whose goals are keeping Stuttgart in the safety of mid-table, far away from the relegation scrap. He, much like the team, have taken the step up in leagues with relative ease, shown by the fact that he's got nine goals and three assists so far this season, less than halfway through, and he'll surely top the seven goals and eight assists that he got in the second division last season. He was signed for eight million, which is proving to be a bit of a steal, and a massive profit on the player could be too much for Stuttgart to turn down. He may be the next in line, like I said, for Stuttgart to sell on because they often take cheap players and sell them for a huge profit. There's been Pavard, there's been Jinzeg, there's been Kabak, and on top of this, Assassin Bar as well, have all made the German club quite a fair bit of money. Number two on the list, and it's the 22-year-old at Sporting Lisbon in Portugal, who, dare I say it, has perfectly stepped into the shoes of the departing Bruno Fernandes. At the time of writing this, Sporting are top of the league. They're hoping to win the title for the first time since 2002 when Cristiano Ronaldo hadn't even made his first team debut yet. This season, Goncalves, who was signed in the summer, is really filling the boots of Bruno Fernandes with some captivating performances. If the name seems familiar to a few Premier League fans, it's not so surprising because... As with many Portuguese players, he spent time at Wolves, although he never made a first-team appearance. He's currently got 12 goals in 13 games from attacking midfield, creating 2.3 chances per game, and is looking like such a competent player, it'll actually be amazing to see that Sporting can hold on to him, even for another year. Moving up to number one then, and of course, Jack Grealish. This really isn't a surprise on this list because he's such an unbelievable player. We've known it for a few years, and now he's getting the recognition he deserves 
purely because Aston Villa are having a decent season. Last season, when they were struggling in a relegation battle, it was all the talk that, yeah, he's doing well, he's a big fish in a small pond, but he could be back in the championship. Aston Villa survived, they made some great signings, and now with Grealish signing a new 130k a week deal, it's gonna cost an astronomical amount of money to take him away from Villa Park. What he's got though, is some insane leadership qualities. He's not only a great captain, but he's a leader on the pitch when it comes to taking the ball in difficult situations, providing the goods at clutch moments. He's getting goals, he's getting assists, and proving to be one of England's best attacking midfielders as well, in a team that is full of attacking talent. Both United and Manchester Manchester City have been linked with him because they're the clubs with the big money to buy and what is going to be an extraordinarily expensive player from another Premier League club, but in my eyes, he's absolutely worth it. One of the most talented attacking midfielders England have produced since Paul Gascoigne. So there you have it, 10 players I think have earned a move this season with some fantastic form, actually in the last two seasons as well. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments of who you would sign for your team. Check out everything else we've got going on in OneFootball and until next time, I will see you guys later.